It really is. Well, let's start. Uh, John Gray, of course, he's written tons of books. He births them on a regular basis. Uh, the one that you guys probably know right away are Men from Mars, Women from Venus. John is with us, and the information that he gave just in a few short minutes on Saturday was pretty profound. John, we wanted you to be here because you are, without a doubt, probably one of the most knowledgeable people on the planet. And again, I just wanted to say hello uh, to you from Eric Edmonds. I just talked to Eric. He's over in Estonia, and he told me to say hello to you. Thank you. He's a good buddy. So first, let's talk about the uh, Blessed Virgin behind you. Uh, you know, I'm a real spiritual guy. I was a monk for nine years before I became this relationship expert. People often say, why, <laughs> why, why, does a monk, why does a monk become a relationship expert? I say, if you haven't had sex in nine years, you think a lot about sex when you stop being a monk. So <laughs> I, I went, I went to the seminary for two years and that was one of those things that just hovered over your head the whole time being, I was going to become a Jesuit priest. That would be going away. So you're right. It's something that men just can't turn off, can they? Well, I think it's real natural for men to be sexual. Uh, it, one of the differences between men and women, if you look at uh, divorce, divorce statistics, men will get married within three years. Women will take nine years and often they don't get remarried. And you can find a lot of reasons for that besides what I'm saying. But you know, uh, older women, older men, they go for younger women and so forth, but they go for younger women because younger women are more in touch with their sexual desires. For women to be sexually responsive, they need high estrogen levels. And for men to be interested in sex, they need high testosterone levels. And if their testosterone levels are low, fresh new sex, new sex is a big burst of testosterone. We need, for those who were in my last talk, as men for our well being, we need uh, 10 to 30 times more testosterone than a woman. And you mentioned on that talk that you had what was called traditionally low testosterone. What I want you to know is when you had the test, you had low testosterone. Right now, if you tested your testosterone, it wouldn't be low. Right now, what it would be is you're, you're a leader. And that's why you're a leader, keeps your testosterone up. I also mentioned that due to your body type, you require a higher testosterone level than me, for example. You have more muscle mask and wider shoulders. So that's, that's born into us. You have a higher requirement for testosterone. So what will happen is you'll burn it off doing exercise. You'll use up your testosterone doing exercise and also being a leader. This is generating and using up testosterone. So to rebuild your testosterone, you need more recovery time. Recovery time is really essential for you. And for the men today, what you see is kind of an epidemic of low testosterone. And one of the reasons for that, one of the reasons, there's several, is there's no permission to do something which is very natural for men, which is to withdraw from relationship. You know, I just experienced you for a minute, the sincerity and the caring that you have means that you're a balanced male. You're on your male and female side. All leaders are. You can't, I mean, productive, successful leaders are. You have to have creativity comes from you, a whole authentic self, masculine and feminine, testosterone and estrogen. But what happens is today, women tend to want men to be more like girlfriends. And we've been indoctrinated with ideas that a woman will say, well, what are you feeling? And we'll tell them. Uh, whenever you talk about your feelings, your estrogen goes up. Now, I'm not saying you can ever talk about your feelings. What I'm saying is, if your testosterone is low, you need to be careful talking to a woman about your feelings. If you're talking to men in a metals group, for example, you can laugh about your mistakes. You have that, you have that accountability. You laugh about your mistakes. You make light of it. That's what builds up testosterone. If you go heavy into it, it causes estrogen. I'm not saying there aren't times when you need to go heavy, but it's very easy to get addicted to being too much on our open side, particularly when you love a woman and she feels hurt when you withdraw into your cave. So I'm just saying for the men listening, we need more permission to do our man things as opposed to doing things women want us to be like in order to be girlfriends. And that's important. And that is us guys should talk to one another about many of our problems as opposed to go to our partner for it. Is that correct? That's correct. And also there can be overemphasis on therapy with guys. Not that therapy, that means I'm in a men's group. Let's all talk about our feelings. We go too far that way. There's a value to that, okay? 
really what we need to do is make jokes and make fun of our friends. You see, there's a lightness to that. There's a wit filled put downs is you can really trust a guy if he can make fun of you. Okay, if you can make fun of me and I can laugh about that, then we're buds. But if I got, oh, I feel so hurt, you're not on my side, how can you, we've become, our society has gone too far into needing safety as opposed to lightness is also safety, differences are safety. And we, we go too far that way of our sensitivities have increased too much. So I'm just telling men, there's, there's a place, you know, for me, I, my, I've been married 34 years with my wife and two years ago she died of cancer and that was very traumatic for me. So there's an old Chinese saying, and I'm not saying it's the perfect thing for now, but it's a great saying, which is, a man never cries unless his heart is broken, which really means you, you allow yourself to go heavy when you really are powerless to fix something. And, you know, losing my wife, I, I grieved for two years, you know, tears every day. And, and that was appropriate because I bonded so deeply with her. But, you know, when things are happening in our life that aren't massive losses, massive loss of business, massive loss of relationship, then you need to go into that place temporarily. But what, they, what has even been found with people who lose, a, they did a study in LA on, on children, on parents who lose a child, which is also a major traumatic thing. They never get over it, meaning they're never happy again. Literally, they're chronically depressed for the rest of their life. And the reason for that, it demonstrates a really important aspect of of grieving or feeling emotions, going deep into our emotions, they're addictive. They found that with these people, they put them in MRIs and they had them, pictures uh, were put up of their children. And just seeing their children, their brain lit up like they were taking cocaine, like they were taking cocaine. So we have to recognize this, that it's, and we men have more of a vulnerability towards addiction because we tend to, we tend due to our muscle mass and so forth, we tend to run out of dopamine very quickly. That's why at the end of the day, we want to sit back and relax, a little motivation. And that's there to put us in our cave in order to rebuild our testosterone. So that deficiency of dopamine makes us more vulnerable to dopamine stimulators. Dopamine stimulators makes us even more vulnerable to dopamine stimulators. That's the whole phenomena of brain changing once you've taken cocaine, for example, they did some studies on the brain and they're not permanent changes, that's the good news. But you take cocaine, and I know some guys watching have done it, and so I wanna say this, 30% of your dopamine receptor sites shut off, which means that normal life's ability to stimulate excitement, passion, or pleasure inside of you has just been decreased by 30%. So you start feeling bored, you start feeling flat, or you start feeling despair. Then you take your cocaine, which stimulates higher levels of dopamine than a human being could ever do, than sex could ever do, okay? You get this big burst of dopamine, your brain goes, I want that. But when you have a high level of dopamine, the dopamine receptor sites, they're like flowers, they close up. And now normal life doesn't give you pleasure. And so then you go to this down state called withdrawal, and then you crave your drug. And if that drug sex, you can just keep craving sex and going after sex and going after sex. And then a regular woman, uh, a personal relationship where there's love and so forth can't turn you on. And that's happening to a lot of men today. They do internet porn and then they lose interest in real women. They, they can't keep it up with a real woman. And that's because a real woman doesn't stimulate that much dopamine. It, internet sex does. So real quick, John, uh, by the way, guys, you got questions, comments, please put them in the chat and then we'll unmute you, and then you can dive in to ask these questions. Which, John, please do that. Take advantage while he's here. John, on a personal level, you said you've gone through this two years of, of separation and anxiety and the passing of your wife. Are you on the other side of that? Are you dating now? Yeah, yeah. After one year, I started dating. Uh, well, well, that's very important in order to heal a broken heart, which is why women never get over it practically. Uh, the death is really hard for them, or even a divorce is that and Freud talked about this, not applying it as I do, but he talked about a phenomenon that occurs when you bond with somebody. And the, the phenomenon is we all need love. Okay, I put on this shirt to look good. I comb my hair. You look great. You okay. look awesome. Okay. Yeah, and so 
we, we do things because we need love. We don't walk around saying, I need your love, I need your love. But think about every conversation you have. You want to say something helpful. You want the person to think good about you. We don't walk around going, I don't care what you think at all. Uh, some unhappy people do. But basically, we are motivated to have love. Now, that's a phenomenon of the civilized world. Once the survival and security needs are pretty much met on your own, the dominant need we have is the need to be loved. And that means people appreciate you, people buy your books, people buy your products, people trust you. They, you know, everything is about, you want, you want raving fans in your business, people who love you and they love your product. Okay, that's, love is what it's about. So we have this need for love. Okay, now, when you feel the need for romantic love, partnership love, you fall in love, your brain goes, okay, my wife, Bonnie, is the source of love now. I need love. Bonnie gives me love. Now I need Bonnie. That's called a need integrate. I no longer need love. I need Bonnie. Mm. So when Bonnie is no longer in front of me, she's gone. Then my brain goes, well, then I can't get what I need because I have integrated into my brain when my need for love is her. I need her as need integrate and it happens to everybody when you fall in love and have lots of sex over many years. So now Basically, I can't get what I need because she's not here. So people have to recognize there's a place where you have to be truthful to yourself. You do your grieving and you interact with other people. You know, we had lots, I had several life celebrations, bringing here people to my house and at other events where we all talked about how much we love Bonnie and how much we miss Bonnie. And each time I would, I would feel I'm missing her, I'm missing her and I feel, but I would feel love. See, love is healing. So I could feel their love for her, then I would feel love, more love for her again. Because the brain thinks, well, I can't get that love now. She's gone. So I needed to start experiencing more feelings of love for her. But I also had to recognize I need to get that need for love met by somebody else. Mm -hmm. And here's the part of it, the guilt that comes up. Because I could have sex with a woman and feel really good, right? Any guy has sex, you, <laughs> you feel really like, good. Oh, it doesn't matter what pizza is. It can be cold or hot. It's going to be sex. It's good. pizza. The next day <laughs> over, it's good. Okay, so, so it, now the brain goes, oh, this is, how the, this is simple logic of the simple brain. The brain goes, I feel pain because I lost my wife. Why do I feel pain? Not just because I lost her, but because I love her so much. So I'm really unhappy, and I was very unhappy. I'm unhappy that my wife died, okay? So why am I unhappy? Because I love her so much. So the brain goes, well, if I'm happy and I'm enjoying myself and I'm smiling, that must mean I don't love her that much. So I've now betrayed her. It's still, you know, I have three daughters. One of them still has a little challenge with me being so happy with another woman. Okay. It's like I betrayed mom, but that's what I went through for a period of time is, well, I can't do that. That's a betrayal to her because it means I don't love her that much. But the reality is just the reason we feel pain is because we're bonded. And so once I start breaking the bond and being in present time and getting that need met with somebody else, You're now my it. brain can do, adopt. So we you need know, to have more sex. It's, it's gotta be crazy because when a woman finds out who you are dating you, it's like, oh damn, he knows all the tricks. You know, it, it, you gotta be the toughest guy to date for a woman. <laughs> You do. <laughs> we had Dr. It Amen. Is true. It is true. She'll say things like, oh, you know everything to say. You do everything right. And so the feeling is, how can I trust you? I say, I came up with those ideas because it's me. <laughs> yeah, true. Hey, I want to talk about video games. Because when we go look at the, uh, the, the, the man that we used to be, we used to go hunting. We used to you know, use our testosterone to do stuff. We were very mobile. Now we're becoming more sedentary. We're sitting around, we're playing video games. Our mind is getting that jack, but our bodies aren't. Are video games affecting us as who we are being men? I'm not against video games in a limited amount of time and, and not all the time. It's so easy to get addicted to that being your testosterone stimulator. But what's happening is you're not using your muscles, okay? You've got to use your muscles and then your muscles are used up then what happens is you rebuild your testosterone and it stays high. You're looking at science, which is showing the guys who game the most have the lowest testosterone. They're looking for that quick fix like cocaine 
it stimulates the dopamine. Video games are designed to have all of the elements to increase your dopamine. It's using your body and using up your testosterone and then resting and recovering that rebuilds testosterone. But dopamine will always give you a quick dose of testosterone. So you're playing this game, you've got levels of accomplishment. Okay, so you can always get to the next level. That's a big dopamine stimulator. The next one is you've got bright colors. That stimulates dopamine. You have sex, that stimulates dopamine, sexy bodies. There's nothing more powerful than the, I remember playing a video game where I could have a woman avatar and I can move her around. I mean, that's sex basically. <laughs> Moving a woman around and controlling her body. You know, this is like, and then shooting a gun, life and death, danger, scoring points, winning. All of this stuff is major dopamine stimulators. They figured all this out. So you get the addiction to the video game. That's a dopamine addiction rather than a testosterone builder. And actually anything that is addiction lowers testosterone over time. It literally, it closes your receptor sites. So normal life doesn't motivate you. Motivation comes through testosterone, not dopamine. Dopamine stimulates testosterone, but it drops right afterwards yeah. and it desensitizes life, life's ability, meaning your partner, your children, your work, your, your goals that you want to achieve. One of the big symptoms for men of low testosterone is procrastination. You need to say, I want to do this and you don't do it. I mean, like right now I'm doing a, well, for, because I have healthy testosterone levels and I have a good support system, I uh, proclaimed this week on my, what, my Facebook Live, I've got a whole group that comes to me, uh, that I'm going to go six days now without eating because I want to get back. What? Really, Yeah, yeah, I can fast. Uh, you know, as a monk, we did fasting, so I know how to do it. I do it from time to time. But what will happen for me, I'll just take a minute, is there's a yogic exercise. I'm a yogi as well, okay? So I meditate every day, and I taught meditation for years and everything. But I, uh, there's a, th it's a banda, one of the bandas where you can move your bowels, and you can make them move back and forth like this. And I can only do it if I'm perfect weight. And so I really miss that. And also one of the healthiest things for your gut, for brain function, is a healthy bowel. So imagine being able to massage, this is exercise, you move your, you suck in and you move your muscles back and forth. You roll your, your, your um, muscles there. So you're massaging just by doing this exercise, your intestines. And that's super great. Now, if you, if you can't do that, you wanna massage them manually, but isn't it great to be able to do it yourself? Yeah, um, how much are you trying to lose? What's that? How much weight are you trying to lose? Uh, over the next week, I'll, I, I just did this last week. I lost five pounds and I didn't fully fast. Just two days I fasted. So this one, I'm going to drink lemon water basically uh, and take mineral supplements. And I'll, do it, I'll get down to 135. And around one, I go down to 135 for me. And that's too little. Then when I start eating again, I'll gain two to three pounds. Okay, then I'm around 138. That's when John, I can do John, if Eric and me is one of your best friends, you should be doing his wild fit. Come on, let's let's be realistic. Hey, wild fit's great. Yeah, he's one of the best in the world. Hey, let's take some questions, guys. Michael, you got the first one. Go for it. Uh, yeah. Hi, John. Um, my question was about uh, masturbation. Now, masturbation seems to be an easier way to um, get me to go to sleep at night. Um, you know, I stopped drinking and smoking pot. So sometimes it's a little more difficult to go to sleep at night, especially if I have a lot of on my mind. Um, is it because of the chemicals that are released from the orgasm? And are, do you recommend any other healthier alternatives? Yes, thank you for bringing that up and appreciate it. Uh, what's interesting, if you go to AA meetings, I went to one once, everybody's eating sugar and donuts and smoking. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's basically, if you give up one dopamine stimulator, you're gonna look for another one. There's yeah. no bigger dopamine stimulator than an ejaculation, okay? That's the, the biggest addiction there is in the world. And, and it's a healthy one if, and to make babies, you know? I had to, nature says we gotta make babies. Okay, so now what happens when you ejaculate? If you, if you have sex with a woman that you care about, after ejaculation, your body makes prolactin. If you have sex alone, you don't make prolactin, which makes you desire sex the next day. Why is that? Well, there's a, okay, first of all, the biology is such that when they've just done the tests and why is, is opinion, okay, I'll give you my opinion, which I think is right. But the actual biology 
is if you have sex with your wife, you ejaculate, you will produce prolactin. Prolactin lowers your dopamine level and decreases your interest in sex. So that's that, that recovery period that every man knows he has. Now, they looked at the actual biological recovery period of a young man in his 20s, and it was six days. Now, you wouldn't think that because you, basically you didn't make prolactin. But here's the biology. They did the study for athletes. They measured their testosterone levels after, before sex, okay? And then what they found, testosterone levels before sex are at an elevated level. Then they uh, measured the next day and it was 50% drop, okay? From what you were when you're having sex to 50% less. Then if you didn't ejaculate for six days, on the seventh day when you wake up, your testosterone levels have doubled. So you're now, they double. This is by, and so what they said is for athletes, have sex on Saturday night. If the tournament's on Saturday, you would have sex on Saturday night or ejaculate, ideally with a woman. Then you go for six days without ejaculating. On the seventh day, you go to the competition and you perform better. And they measured it. They measured the testosterone and then they measured the performance and it dramatically increased. So yeah. a few seconds can make the difference in any competition. So that gives you the competitive edge is don't ejaculate. If you read Think and Grow Rich, you'll see that in many cases, those guys who really succeeded a lot, achieved a lot, they called it sex sublimation. <clears throat> they didn't explain what it was, but <clears throat> it was certainly not releasing a lot of ejaculate. But if Michael doesn't have the, the, the woman next to him to allow that to happen, what's the, is, is masturbation yeah, okay? Or you first think? to know, if you, there's a tendency to become addicted to masturbation. There's a tendency to be addicted because the prolactin that would get produced if you're connecting to somebody real. See, when you have sex with a woman, <clears throat> testosterone goes up, dopamine goes up. Also, oxytocin goes up. Oxytocin keeps your testosterone from going too high. Estrogen goes up. Estrogen keeps the dopamine from going too high. It keeps everything into normal parameters. So your receptor sites all stay open. You still still have the same pleasure and fulfillment. You just don't have them closed down. So when you're doing it alone, you're not getting the oxytocin. You're not getting the estrogen. You're not getting the serotonin of being with somebody. So those are all the factors involved with real relationship. So masturbation by itself is addictive. And one has to know that it's an addiction, just like sugar is an addiction. If you eat it, you're going to want more. One Oreo, you're going to want another one and another one. Yeah. There's certain substances that are addictive. So if you need to masturbate to sleep, that's a sign that you need your... your <clears throat> what happens when you masturbate is you will get a surge of testosterone and then your estrogen levels shoot up and estrogen puts you to sleep. Okay, so... You know how you make love with a woman and after a few minutes, you start wanting to pull away, okay? And it's a great sleeping pill. Estrogen goes high, testosterone goes down, you fall asleep. <clears throat> so <clears throat> what you wanna do is find another habit that will produce estrogen that you do during the evening. And that would be reading books, playing the piano, having a violin or what, any kind of cultured activity, reading books that are, See, watching TV is a high stimulator. <clears throat> you want to have something which is a lower stimulator if you don't have a woman to produce estrogen. Having a pet around the house, having children around the house, but these things a single man may not have. So basically you have to treat it like any addiction and do it once and then go through withdrawals. And withdrawals will happen just like with any drug. It's a very powerful drug, ejaculation. And so to get better sleep, I would then recommend, because you asked me what to do for sleep when you're going through the withdrawals, at my website, <clears throat> I'm, I also have a whole health food store, you know, disclose here, and I actually manufacture products for myself. I used to have par early stage Parkinson's. Really? That's, a, that's a dopamine, uh, inhibited dopamine function is what Parkinson's is. It's your, my head would involuntarily shake whenever I would talk or focus. And that means I don't have enough dopamine to control the muscles when I focus my brain. So, you know, rather than take the drugs for that, that only gets worse and worse and worse. They don't help you heal the condition. I analyzed that what does a drug addict do when they go through withdrawals? They lose muscle control, you see? And so I was losing muscle control. I had dopamine, inhibited dopamine function. 
due to, which is interesting for some of the superstars that come on this show, high public acclaim is addictive. I was addicted to standing ovations. Yes. And I knew how to get them. And I had thousands of people. And I was out there working all the time, pumping it up. I was number one on the New York Times bestseller list for over four years. Who's ever been number one at the top of the list for four years, over four years? Crazy. So that was like, and, until actually that was like boring, you know? That's your cocaine. <laughs> yeah, that was my cocaine. Number one, and all the recognition I got desensitized my dopamine receptor sites. So suddenly life became rather flat and boring. And then I started getting all those symptoms. So what I did is I analyzed drug addicts, what they go through. And I went to a clinic down in Mexico for drug addicts. And I watched cocaine addicts in one week without withdrawal symptoms go off. Uh, we did IV drips of proteins, IV drips of pre-digested protein, which makes dopamine and serotonin. I watched cocaine addicts, uh, Oxycontin addicts. I watched uh, sugar addicts, smoking addicts. Uh, heroin addicts, and we sat in that room getting our IV drips, nine of us, for one week, and everybody went off their addictive craving, didn't have any drugs. All we did is felt tired. We just sort of sat around for four or five hours feeling tired. Energy was low, but no suffering, no side effect problems or anything like that, because we were giving our body pre-digested proteins. After three months, it wore off. I went back, did it again. I said, does it wear off for everybody? He says, generally for most people, it wears off. What it was is the reason we, we get stress in our life, high dopamine can also produce stress when there's not high serotonin. So what happens when, when we're stressed, and you know, uh, speaking in front of 2,000 people, doing a Broadway show is stressful. You know, what are the reviews? What are people going to think? How's it going to work tonight? Is it going to happen? You know, all that goes into it. Even though I loved it, without a doubt, that stress inhibits digestion. Anytime you have cortisol, worrying, stress, concerns, pressure, push, that inhibits digestion to such a point where you can't digest your proteins to convert them into amino acids to make dopamine, to make serotonin, to make GABA. These are like three very important brain chemicals that we know that had to be in balance. And because I was making so much dopamine, desensitized my dopamine things, receptor sites, now I had inhibited dopamine function, which eventually becomes Parkinson's. It also can become ADD, ADHD type symptoms. At that point, I said, okay, I don't wanna be going getting IV drip every three months for, for a week, you know? and. <clears throat> So what I did is I formulated, this is a product that I formulated, the perfect amino acid balance of pre-digested proteins. And how I did that is, nobody's done this. I keep telling everybody to do it, nobody's done it. Is if you take, if you take cow protein, cow protein has two proteins that we need for our brain, like mother's milk, protein for the brain. You have case- are, are you talking about whey protein? Is it when you say cow protein? <clears throat> Two proteins in cow, whey protein and casein protein. Casein, right. casein turns to dopamine. Whey protein turns to serotonin. Okay, this is what they're designed for. Mother's milk is equal, almost equal amounts of casein and, and whey protein. Cow milk is 90% casein. This is for an animal that's huge. They need more muscle mass. So 90% casein, 10% whey protein. That's what the balance for them. So what I did is created a shake, which is balanced for men or balanced for women. The, a little boy will generally get 60% casein and 40% whey. His mother will figure it out. The mother's body actually produces a different kind of milk for boys than girls. And the girl will have about 60% whey protein, 40% casein. They don't need as much dopamine. They need to work to relax more. They need more serotonin. We need more motivation. That's gonna be your, your casein. Now casein is hard to digest from cow's milk because it's 90% and it's also heat processed. So there are, you can get, my shake is not heat processed. It's called undenatured casein and undenatured whey in the balance which is right for men and the balance which is right for women. Not cow balance, but human balance. And then you bring in enzymes, you bring in 
Now the enzymes are activated by minerals. You need minerals to activate enzymes. Enzymes break down the protein. So you take two scoops of the superfood Mars Venus shake. You take two scoops with and room temperature water, room temperature, shake it up and sit for 30 to 45 minutes and it digests itself. It bubbles, it incubates. And now you have fresh incubated digested proteins and you drink it and it immediately goes into your brain. It has a completely different effect. The Swiss tested this in their laboratories and they found that most protein shakes or even meat, you get about 20 to 30% of the uh, protein in your body. The rest is waste. Uh, some of it actually turns into sugar, but your body only gets about 30%, 20 to 30% protein. When it's pre-digested like this, you get 92%, all goes right into your brain. It's a, and to your muscle mass. So, muscle so mass let me make sure I understand. Basically, you're telling Michael to stop jerking off so much. Oh, yeah, come back to Michael, sorry. Okay, Michael. I just want to make hey, sure. Hey, wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Not every night, hey, come on. <laughs> I, I know, I'm just saying, I think you're reading what John's saying. I'm, what I'm saying is don't, you gotta stop it. You have to realize it's just a habit, it's an addiction, it's a dependency. And it continues to lower your testosterone, which causes you to need that. To get that big spike, it causes estrogen to go up and put you to sleep. So you, you, you basically, you're cre at masturbation is you're building attention. Okay, you're actually building attention that builds up and you're enjoying it. Okay, it's pure pleasure, no question about it. This feels like the best thing in the world. Just like if you had your first ice cream bowl. You know, this is the best thing in the world. It's pure sugar. Because it looks like ice cream when he's done. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, if you could take this in and saying, okay, this is a natural thing. I got addicted to it. It's natural to get addicted to it. I need, and because if you have a high stress life, that's also, this becomes your way to get that hit of dopamine. So, of, of, and, t and testosterone. So what, what you do then is you say, all right, I'm like a cocaine addict. I got to go through withdrawals do something to help rebuild my brain fast. And that's my superfood shake, one thing. The next thing is super minerals. It turns out that if you're eating, if you're in stress or you eat a lot of sugar or carbs, your brain becomes depleted in a mineral, you don't, that's good. But I'll just say for other people, and this is really helpful. First of all, you are under a lot of stress because you're masturbating. <laughs> that's a huge, huge big, Intense intensity rather than stress. I'll just say intensity intensity depletes the brain of minerals Okay, now what are the minerals we need? That we become less of if we have intensity and those minerals are alkalizing minerals. There's five of them. There's Calcium magnesium potassium zinc particularly you need more zinc because every time you ejaculate you lose your zinc You know, you're completely zinc deficient now if you're doing that every day and the other one, which is I'll talk more about, is lithium. Now, everybody's heard of lithium for bipolar people, right? Mm -hmm. Well, bipolar people go in swings. They go way up, and then they go way down. They get really excited, and they go to sleep. It's mood and balance is all caused by deficiency of lithium. So if you take somebody who's bipolar, they go way up, and they crash way down. They go way up, and they crash way down. That's because they don't have lithium in their brain, which regulates dopamine and serotonin levels producing GABA, which is pure happiness. So doctors give, for, they used to, now they've got drugs and everything, they have side effects, but lithium had side effects because they gave people 500 times the dose that you need to cure your addiction. Okay, now why, do, why 500 times more? Because they use, they just dig it out of the ground. It's called lithium carbonate. It's the, the lithium is the mineral binded to carbonate. <clears throat> That's the delivery system into the brain. Dr. Nieper, about 40 years ago, discovered that if you take minerals and bind them to mother's milk, we're back to mother's milk again. Bind them to mother's milk, a substance in mother's milk called erratic acid, and you take lithium orotate, you only need four and a half to probably for an addiction, you need eight milligrams a day of lithium orotate as opposed to what a doctor prescribes is 500 milligrams. Okay, so we're talking sometimes a thousand milligrams of the actual lithium. So you're talking about <clears throat> taking lithium from a doctor is taking it like a drug which has side effects. No side effect of taking lithium orotate except stable mood and lack of addiction. So that's, that's 
<laughs> yeah, and I was going to say, Stephen <laughs> Fox said, geez, winking off is really complicated. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to get to a couple other quick questions because we could, I guess, we could spend all day on this. But at um, least on that one little point, go to MarsVenus.com or YouTube and find my talks on lithium orotate. And you'll find that how to get the best and how to get the right dose for you. Okay. Well, and not just that. There's the, there's the products right there. Okay. So Thank if you. If you go to uh, John's page, and this is uh, uh, MarsVenus.com, you can find the shakes right here. MarsVenus.com. And, and there's the shake and there's the minerals right under it. And there's also yep. the lemonade drink that I'll be drinking all this week. So I don't need, I'll take the minerals and lemonade so that I don't feel hungry. And you have to get over a little willpower and then you're free. You Those know who's a member of our things. group? Who's another member of our group is uh, Dave Asprey. I saw you had some Bulletproof stuff there. Dave's a good friend. Dave's uh, a good friend of mine as well. And I will say just for fun, because there's a bunch of guys where I can yep. brag, okay. Dave calls me the grandfather of biohacking. Does he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I've been doing this for like, since I had, you know, 20 years ago, and he used to have these events and I would speak at them. I still do speak at his events. Dave, I'm surprised some of the stuff you're saying Dave hasn't talked about, but I'll, I'll go after him later. Hey, I'm gonna go to Brad. Brad, you wanna ask a question regarding uh, dietary supplements and tea? Yeah, th thank you for coming on um the question i had is you know just getting older i'm feeling like i'm procrastinating more don't have the energy and a lot of people are talking about you know uh tea levels and i know there's artificial ways to do that and maybe some more holistic ways and you're talking about uh what you do and what you don't do but what, what are some ways to, to to boost your tea level that you would recommend as someone's getting in their 50s yeah yeah when i was in my 50s they were half what they are now Okay, so I, doing what I'm about to suggest to you made a huge difference for me. I also wrote a book back here called Beyond Mars and Venus. I just want to reference it if you want more information. Yeah, awesome. Please. It, it, it's all about the hormones, but something I can give you right now, it's a big subject, is wanking off <laughs> once a week at the most. Now, okay. Some men, when they have low testosterone, they don't even want to do that, but you don't need to do that. But if you feel the need to, to masturbate, once a week, that gives you your plenty of, you, you're depleting yourself of zinc and zinc's necessary to make testosterone. So that's one biological thing. Okay. Two, what are the things that challenge you? Now, usually by the time you get to 50, you already know what you can do and you're good at it. So yeah. nothing challenges you. So you have to be learning something new that challenges you because it's when that feeling of challenge comes up where you overcome hurdles that produces testosterone. I see you play guitar back there. Are you a musician? Yeah, no, I write music for film and TV, and I've noticed that I haven't had the motivation to write music as much. And I'm wondering, and I've been procrastinating more, so I'm wondering if it's just because my purpose has changed and I'm interested in other things, or I'm just not, you know, I'm just wondering why I don't have the motivation to do well, the things that I'm a, interested in as much. A, a big part of it is you've made it, okay? You develop your talent. It's not as challenging as it used to be. It wasn't that if I'm gonna get there, I know what I can do, I can do it, so there's no challenge there. Yeah, and I wanna mention as a musician, there's an extra challenge you have. You are born with a talent, which means any talent, if you're like a talented person, like a creative talented person, it means that you're born already with a genetic structure that's both masculine and feminine more than most guys. So you're more in touch with your feelings, your creativity, your emotions, and so forth. So one thing I talked about before being in a men's group like metal, but not indulging in talking about feelings, but being light about them. That's one thing that builds testosterone. Two is challenge. Three is working out using muscles. You know, you've got it, to build testosterone. It's proven you do heavy weights. Now you don't have to do them every day, like once or twice a week, you push it to the max and then you rest and you don't worry about exercise, okay? You have to have this recovery period. And one of the things that lowers testosterone as well is watching sports. As much as, <laughs> as, much as guys watch sports, if you're if doing sports raises testosterone. Watching sports is like an addiction that gives you a pump of testosterone and then your testosterone crashes because you really didn't win that touchdown. When you watch the touchdown, you're that player. You're running the touchdown. Everybody's cheering for you. So you get a fantasy level of testosterone, which crashes right again. And it goes to a higher level than you're able to achieve on your own. 
that then lowers your receptor sites as well. So not wrong with watching some sports, that's fun to do. We all need our fun activities, but more physical activities, more physically demanding activities and doing things in your life that you don't want to do, but serve a purpose. That's a really big testosterone. See, my life, I can have whatever I want. You know, I've made it, I've done it, I can have fun. You know, last week I just finished six weeks doing a, two hours of Facebook Live. I don't have to do that. I, I'd be like, hey, every day I get up and do this, I'd rather be having sex. <laughs> but I did it. I said, no, I said I'm going to do it, so I have to do it. And, and so I, got, I did it, and, and, you know, but I don't have to. So, so it was like, that makes it, if I just do what I like to do and have fun and do what I want to do, testosterone goes down. Complacency so, goes, because of the complacency. Yeah, it's, it simplifies complacency. So doing things that you have to do that do make a difference. That's the whole key to it, that you're well paid, that you get a difference, that you make a difference. It would be even with the music composing, I know with me books, I have to tell a whole bunch of people I'm going to write a book before I'll write a book. It's hell writing a book. I mean, shit, I have to be alone all the time. I mean, I love doing it. That means my whole life stops while I do it. You can't have all the sex you want, John. That's exactly right. Damn. <laughs> well, I think now, sometimes that, when I get a, a project, I'm afraid I'm going to not get to hang on my kids or do what I want. So I, I don't try as hard to get new work. That's right. That's I'm right. So you're stuck you, in my room sitting here doing work. But also you know, it was so out. easy easy for me to write books when that was my, I was a counselor. I made my money every month. Suddenly I get a book contract. Now I got a contract. I made a promise. It has to be delivered by a certain day. And this is going to make money that my family needs. Yeah. So there was a whole mission and a purpose around it and another book and another book. And then I didn't really need it, but I got such big contracts. <laughs> I said, okay, I'll do it. And my publishers at one point, they said, I said, when do you want this done by? They said, John, you can do it whenever you want. I said, don't tell me that. Give yeah. me a date. And if I don't make that date, it means it's going to inconvenience a lot of people. You know, like they have to put out magazines, they have to advertise in advance, they have to have printing notices, they have to ship it to the stores. So I told them, tell me why it has to be at this date. Otherwise, it's a disaster. That's what had to sort of up my energy to, okay, I got to get this done. So it's that mission and purpose, finding right. something that's really you have to do it's not it's something you don't want to do sometimes is a real easy one and you mentioned working out like once once a week i, I work week. out every day no that's every too much yoga or i'm telling you working running out. or so i do something different though like one day i'll do yoga one day i'll do running one day i'll do swimming it's always something different but i feel like if i don't i get like angst and i feel like if i stop then i will just start losing the groove of doing it and then stop doing okay I, i'm with you there the, the angst you're getting and the groove you're doing it is your body needs that testosterone when you exercise you're producing testosterone without a doubt but if you're not also recovering and you have to really push yourself so that you know there's something called 20 minutes it's not my thing but it's it's i do it on my bicycle where you push really hard so this is a big testosterone booster here's another example mercola talks about it online he has a system for it i have a system for it Okay, you're going along, like in my pool, you swim. So you're out there doing your swimming and you swim for a few minutes and then for 20 seconds, push as hard as you can to like you're really pushing, pushing, pushing for 20 seconds and then sit by the pool and let yourself be out of breath. And do that for a couple of minutes and then go out and push yourself again or swim a little bit more and push yourself really hard and then recover. I do it on the bicycle when I'm not swimming. And so what I'll do is I do my bicycle and then I push really hard for 20, 30 seconds. And then I stop. I just let myself automatically breathe. When you automatically breathe, what you're doing is you're rebuilding the testosterone. You're recovering from just you running out of testosterone. You can completely deplete. Then you have to relax for, you know, if you did it for 10 seconds, you want to relax for two to three minutes if your breath is out of control. If your breath isn't like <sighs> hyperventilating, then you didn't push hard enough and you allow yourself to hyperventilate. And most people don't know the benefit of that. So what they end up doing is they start to hyperventilate <sighs> and they hold it. All you have to do is take a deep breath and hold it and it will stop. And what you just did, what happens when you hold your breath? You produce a stress response. So you want to allow yourself to go into recovery. So that's another testosterone booster. Another one is a, a supplement from China called Myomin. 
Myomin also kicks estrogen out of your liver. If How do we spell that? Spell that. M-Y-O-M-I-N. M-Y-O-M-I-N. And you can hear my video on it at marsvenus.com. It's so popular that the CDC won't allow anybody to talk about its benefits. No, the FDA shut them down. So you'll see this product and there's no description of what it does other than it helps eliminate estrogen from your liver. When you eat, uh, when you eat meat that has hormones in it, those hormones go into your, your liver. They're female hormones. So your estrogen levels start going up. When your estrogen goes up in a man's body, it sends a message to the brain to stop making testosterone. Mm. So that's just what happens. Uh, plastics do it. Meat with, with uh, estrogen, most meat, if they don't say hormone free, you're eating estrogen basically. Yeah, how, long, and, how often should we take my omen? Is it a daily regimen? It's a three month program where you take double the dose every day and you'll kick all the estrogen out of your body. Now, if you want to do the shortcut to that, what I'm doing for the next six days is I'm drinking, taking super minerals and my lemonade mixture, which is lemon, water, probiotics, aloe vera, all this stuff. And I drink it five times a day. I feel no hunger. Yeah, but that uh, one sounds, that sounds horrible. Oh, doing. it's fantastic. It, it sounds horrible. Days. Do it for three days. Do it for two days. Use your manpower. Anytime, <laughs> do what you don't want to do. I'm telling you, you feel like Superman when you can overcome your senses. Anyway, right. you do that. Even a day of not eating, if you're addicted to eating, it makes you, it builds testosterone. Anytime you overcome a challenge, you tell people I'm going to do it and you do it, testosterone goes up. God, I hate that. I always overcommit and I do these things. Ah, hey, uh, Freddie, you want to say hi to John, right? I do want to say hi to John. Freddie Ravel here, John. Hey, buddy. Good to see you so it's long. Great to I'm so glad you're here. I saw you remember the group. That's very cool. Yeah, well, it's great. I'm so glad you're sharing your brilliance with everyone, John. And I still have fond memories of being in the Amazon for 10 days with you. So. Yeah, we had such good time. <laughs> Freddie's a great example. Freddie, um, I, I don't think, do you share your age, Freddie? Well, for my metal guys, I guess I can. But yeah, I don't feel like that age. How old are you, Freddie? I'm 60. And how old's your, your girlfriend? 40. And you guys keep up with each other all the time, don't you? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I really just think of it as a number. I, I, I feel great, you know? Well, I'm saying, I'm saying testosterone-wise. Your testosterone, especially once you met her, your testosterone shot up pretty massively, didn't it? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I mean, it's been, it's great, but, uh, and I haven't even applied all of John's knowledge to it, so I gotta, I can't wait yeah. to do that. <laughs> okay, back, back to boosting up testosterone. There's nothing like a woman adoring you like you're a Superman. That yeah. is the best testosterone stimulator there is. And Perfect. the number one way to knock that testosterone down is a woman complaining to you. That's why I train women. They read my books and they realize if, if they complain, you're going to have some more, more to complain about. It's as simple as that. Men do best when we're shining. And we need to, most of all, if we have an intimate partner, we want them to see that shine. Bravo. Thank you, John. So the minute they start bitching, there's, a, there's a, one of the guys in this group, his name's Mike. He's not here. His whole motto is good news only. GNO. That's all he wants to hear is good news only. And this guy has got more testosterone. He can share it with the whole group. Because he believes in that. And you're right, John. It sounds like that's the direction. Well, John, let, me, let, me, let me give another balance of 40 years marriage counselor here. You say to a woman, good news only, she'll start to suppress herself and she can actually lower her estrogen that way. Women, being, when a woman feels safe to express her feelings, they will increase their estrogen. Now, a woman, that doesn't mean no accountability for how they express. I say never complain. It's ridiculous. But talk about your feelings. So if something there's to complain about, every complaint is a hidden request. Like you never turn out the lights is would you turn out the light? So what women don't know is how to convert their complaints into a request and also how to share feelings so it doesn't knock a man's testosterone down. And this is what any man can say to his partner. If you want me to hear what you're saying and you're sharing your feelings with me, preface it by telling me it's not a big deal. <laughs> Mm, that's Imagine a, a woman saying, you know, I was upset the other day and I just want to talk about it for a few minutes, two to three minutes, and it's not a big deal and I don't need you to say anything. I'll feel better and I'll just want to hug. That's a magic formula. Now, I, I teach that to women. It's so counter to what they think. 
because they think the only way they can get you to hear them is to raise their voice and get more and more upset. When actually, think about it as a man, if I start out by saying, look, I just need to talk to you, already your adrenaline response goes off, but it's not a big deal. I just need to talk a few minutes. That's another adrenaline response when women need to talk. How long is this gonna go on? And the, other, and the third thing is don't say anything. Just understand and I'll feel better. I'm not asking you to change. That's what we want. Acceptance is a major testosterone producer that I'm accepted just as I am. John, John one quick thing uh, before we have to wrap up. Um, my first marriage, I, uh, I, I had more infidelity than ever before. Matter of fact, I dated more when I was married than I, when I was single. It's horrible. <laughs> okay. And then my last relationship, I was, and, and now the current one, I, I don't even look at other women. I'm so content, so happy. Isn't that wonderful? It's, oh, it's, it's incredible because I don't lie to myself. I don't lie to others. It's, it's, it makes me a complete man. But the men that I know that I really admire, some of them are, they have multiple sex partners or they're in, they have massive infidelity. What's that say about them, where they're at or the situation? Uh, well, what, what happens is if you're married to your wife and she's not responding to you sexually, naturally you have that need to have that response because that doubles your testosterone is when a woman responds sexually to you. Mm -hmm. So if she's over there and she's not responding to you. And I did a study of this. I found that men in first class, I would get to talk to them because I'm flying first class. They almost all were having affairs. Now, not all, but almost all. Right. And almost all, I, I would talk about their sex life. I start out and they knew I wrote the book, Men Are From Mars, so they talk a little bit more with me. And I say, how's your sex life? They say, great. And then I say, well, go back to when you had children. Didn't it like anything happen? And go, yeah, when you have kids, you're not having sex so much, whatever. The truth is what happens is there were three times, it takes three moments in a man's life with his wife where he wants to have sex and suddenly the neighbors are more important, the party that she's preparing for, making dinner is more important, the kids are more important. Making other people more important than having sex with you is a major trauma. Uh, this, is, this is a part of us that has no brain, it's our penis, all right? <laughs> we don't control it. Three real sexual rejections like that Suddenly, you're no longer like, hey, let's jump in bed, honey, or let's go have sex. It's suddenly like, is she in the mood? Is she not in the mood? And you get caught into this weather report thing where you wonder when she's in the mood, when she's not in the mood, and that dampens your testosterone levels as opposed to that woman who was basically almost always in the mood when you wanted to have sex. So there, there's a real key thing to have good communication around sex so that men don't feel rejected. Uh, there was, we were just talking about something else and I forgot what we we're talking about. If you can remind Infidelity. me. Infidelity. Infidelity. Yeah, yeah. So when you, when you lose interest in your partner. You know why, John? Because you're hungry. You're forgetting because you're hungry. You need some protein. Okay. And water. Just water actually is what I need. Uh, well, as soon as you're not interested in your wife, I was explaining one of the reasons why we lose interest. Another is arguments and fights in the bedroom. Another one is watching the news in the bedroom. You want to have the bedroom a sacred place where you just have love and slack sex and sleep. But anyway, having said all that, how many men, sometimes we're out in the world, we're all feeling turned on, horny, want to come home and have sex with our wife. We walk in the door and it's gone. Just yes. gone. Just goes. Out. And suddenly we feel tired. We're not, it's not that we're having no sex because we're tired. We're tired because our sex organ says, I'm going to be rejected. It's not being celebrated. I mean, this is just between guys, but I like to stand up after sex, have this big erection and say, look at that. And she goes like, amazing. Talk about that. <laughs> That's what we need. You know, women all want to walk around as goddesses. This is our God, you know, <laughs> it needs to be adored and loved. And they've got all this, all this sort of sex inhibition can knock your testosterone down. But having said that, back to having affairs, when you have an affair with a woman outside of your marriage, it's a higher dopamine stimulator. And that desensitizes dopamine receptor sites, which means you have less ability to be turned on to your wife, just like an addiction. You got caught up in the high of a new woman, a new challenge, a different experience, new and different. It's just like crazy dopamine levels. And a marriage can never produce that because a marriage is also love and comfort and ease and relaxation. That's serotonin. So you have to have this right balance of dopamine and serotonin. And that, by the way, is always going to be harder for creative men. Okay, there's a lot of creative guys here. Okay, men have the, who have the creativity and have the flow in their life. 
uh, what happens is you're more in touch with your female side. So you can go to your loving side easier. And that it's not that the male side of us is not loving, it's detached. It's logical, it's reasonable, it's rational, it's complete detachment, it's non-emotional. All emotions are estrogen. All negative emotions in a man is too much estrogen, not enough testosterone. And all positive emotions is high testosterone along with high estrogen. And that's what you want. And that's your creative space that you get through. But so that's a vulnerability for a successful, we would call it genius people, people who have a talent. You know, they have more male, female side. And you can actually see the difference in their brains. They're using both sides of the brain. John, thank you so much. John, how do we get you to be part of metal? Come on, you should be hanging out with us on a regular basis. I agree, I agree. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm gonna find a way to make it happen now because okay. you're holding All right. in this incredible collective. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> gonna hunt you down. So John, people wanna find out more, just go to the website. Where do you want us to go? Oh, oh find out more about me. Yes. Uh, MarsVenus.com is my website. And John Gray, Mars, Venus is the big website. It's a big Facebook thing. And I just finished this whole six weeks. And if anybody's interested in enjoying a couple hours every day watching my yeah. series, it's there. It's all there. It's really good. On Mondays, I teach meditation. On Tuesdays, I teach uh, communication skills. Wednesdays, I teach healing the broken heart of the past. Four, uh, Thursdays, I teach success principles. On Friday, I teach sex, romance, and dating. So is it a so, subscription, a subscription model? No, it's free. It's free. It's and, just, and, and, and why? Is there a reason? Be, just because you've achieved everything, you don't want to charge? Is there a reason? I guess, yeah. Well, I, I'm bored sitting at home. <laughs> 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 I mean, I need to make money. I'm a company and everything, but I used to travel. You know, I travel to 20 different countries, you know, big audiences. I make a lot of money and suddenly, you know, I still have enough money. But I, I, I need to teach, otherwise I'd be depressed. You know, where's my testosterone come from? I, darn, I have to get up and do that talk. And then once I'm doing it, I'm feeling great, but I overcame that resistance. Anytime you overcome resistance to doing what you said you're gonna do, testosterone. Guys, everybody unmute yourself and let's thank John for giving us his time and convince him to become a metal member. Come on. Thanks, John. Yeah, John. Great hey, job. Hey, John. Oh, John. Us. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you. Hey, guys, John, thank you. Great to hang out with you. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.